Hello, Paul Pounds. How are we doing? I wanted to say a massive hello and welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing, guys. I genuinely appreciate it. And thank you and hello to all my existing subscribers who are also equally wonderful and equally as equally important to me. Um, I was going to do kind of an author retrospective this week, but... I've been super busy with work and not quite finished reading everything I needed to read. Um, I've kind of realised it was Wednesday this morning. It's like, oh my word, I've not quite finished everything. So I'm going to do a bit of a bit of a lazy video where I just look at things that I like. Sorry. But anyway, before we get into it all, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor. Look at this baby, A is for apple, B is for baby. Look at me baby is the new cuddly doll from Palatoy. Pay attention baby. Just wind her up with her rattle, she turns her head and only has eyes for you. And here's baby alive, she can drink and eat her own food, she's a clever baby too. New look at me baby and baby alive from Palatoy. So yeah, I uh, it's Wednesday and I want to do a video. So I kind of I'm having a bit of a shift around in my living room, not too much with the bookcases, just resorting because they get out of sequence when I talk about books a lot and think, oh, was that one? Some you know when I'm thinking about videos, my bookcases do get out of order a little bit. So I'm just kind of resorting some stuff, and then as I buy new stuff, I don't really like books kind of piled up like that. That was off camera, I think. I don't really like books piled up and the need put in with the other authors and everything's a little bit out of sequence from doing assorted videos. And while I've been kind of starting to put things in some kind of order, uh, one of the sections I've been looking at is my New English Library books. And one thing I adore about New English Library is the covers. And I know you meant to. I know you meant the covers are meant to catch you and draw you in. And... I don't, for me, no company did it, no publisher did it better than New English Library. They're beautiful and amazing and unpredictable and stylish. And it's one of the things that makes, there's, there's like a little set of things that makes me love New English Library. It's it, A lot of the time it's like the thin book with the tiny text and they're trying to make that edition as cheap as possible. I love that quite a cheap guy so that appeals to me the cover is striking in some way and it stands out from other horror books a lot of the time because that's what's going to make you pick it up and buy it and just the, the whole trashiness and classiness like equally it it's kind of odd and I don't know why I adore New English Library books so much but Here's 20 of my favourite horror, there's, they're not all horror, there's maybe one or two grimy ones in there. Um, somebody ought to write a collector's guide to New English Library, didn't they? That's not me. <laughs> so let's get stuck in and have a little look at some of these gorgeous covers. Now they're in no particular order. Um, they're just in the pile that they came off the shelf, really. I haven't really taken any out of the series, is, you know, like the Specialist and uh, Don Glute's Frankenstein series, because I've t I've done specific videos about them and had the covers up. So there's there's maybe one or two out of a series in here, but a bunch of these are one-offs or things that I haven't really talked about much on my channel. Um, so there might be some new stuff in there that you look at and think, I quite fancy getting that. That'd be cool if I make you spend more money. I'm sorry, no, that wouldn't be cool, would it? That would be like mean of me to kind of go, you want this? And then you look online and it's stupid 70s and 80s New English Library prices because they are a bit crazy. So first up is a really great novel. It's The Sorcerer by Eric Erickson. He only... Uh, I think he only wrote like three novels and a reference book um 
and they're re- they're kind of all kind of conspiratorial occult, but I just think it's beautiful. I love the. So many horror covers are black or dark, and this is subtle and understated. And the illustration, um, I think the illustrator's credited David McAllister. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. If I could do an illustration to that quality, I would be a happy man. Next up, something a bit different. So... Two things I love about Nell is you get beautifully illustrated covers and you get slightly bonkers photo covers. Both I love equally and I don't know why. So next up is The Evil Under the Water by David Gurney, which is uh that that cover it's it's like everything. There's a dude there's like a dude doing some kind of sacrifice with a goat mask on. There's ladies it says water on the cover, so they put water on the cover. And it's it's just like an amalgam of all the things that would make me buy a trashy paperback, but it's not even drawings; it's photos. They've actually the one thing I love about photo covers is they've obviously had to get people to do that. So to create this photo cover, they found a goat mask and got a dude to stand there, and then got a lady in the buff, and done all the photos i just think it's genius so that's an awesome photo cover oh it's, like i said these aren't in any order it's a crime one next it's uh this fell sergeant by david garner which is a a great kind of crazy not not crazy as in bonkers but as in it echoes some of the things that the cray brothers uh were involved in and stuff like that it's a bit of a craze kind of rip off but I just love this cover. It's a Lucinda Cowell cover. And I, I just think it's stylish and brilliant. And there's obviously, there's something that draws me with the with the smart suits and the rat heads. It's, it's a cool book anyway. But this cover is just gorgeous. One of my absolute favourites. Back to horror and back to illustration. Martin Jensen, an odour of decay. It looks rancid. It looks rank. That corpse looks like it stinks. And it's quite a bold illustration. It's quite high contrast. Where the light's catching like the cheekbone and the ear and the like top of the gums and stuff. I just it just works for me. I when I got this one, I just spent I had a cup of tea and just sat and looked at it because it is so, so beautiful. And then, again, that juxtaposition, another one of my all-time favourites for its shabby photo coverness, is uh, Dracula number 3, but it's not. It just... There was never any others. There was just this one. Uh, Dracula and the Virgins of the Undead by Etienne Aubin who was uh, Jim Moffat. Um, And I've talked about this one in me, Dracula, um, uh, the the Robert Laurie Dracula series. uh, It's just supposition as to why this one came out, but it's just an odd little anomaly. But just like that late, right, I don't know if it's like, if the photo technology existed to kind of superimpose cobwebs, or if they got a lass in a nighty, up litter, and then just put like some kind of cotton wool type dragged out cobwebs all over it. I hope it's that, because that would make me laugh so much. Next up, we, we kind of flick in between uh, photos and gorgeous illustrations. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is just a beautiful illustration. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It makes me want to watch old versions of Jekyll and Hyde or I Monster. And it, it's just that I've read quite a lot of Robert Louis Stevenson and I'm not always that much of a fan. I think I, I find his, uh, the way he writes quite difficult to read sometimes. But it's just a 
gorgeous book that absolutely beautiful so one now that's uh, an odd style but i really love the style it's the apocalypse by jeffrey convicts uh it's the sequel to the sentinel that i'm not sure new english library published i think star published it i've got a star edition but i just love everything about this cover the typeface for the apocalypse is gorgeous the inverted cross the kind of flaming nun habit the blood dripping from it even the gradient from black to bright red it i just think it's really stylish really clever and as a as like a collage of things everything working together it really draws me in and it really makes me want to want to crack on and read and buy that um I just think it's an awesome, an awesome design. And one I've spoken about on this channel before, The Devil's Rider by Alex Stewart. Um, and this one is kind of a horror one. It's like a horror biker because it is Satan's motorbike that he gets. Um, and the, the thing I adore about this cover that makes me laugh so much is the fact that this is obviously the dude this is probably the devil's motorbike but it's got like a genius like <laughs> horn on it and it's like yeah it's satan's motorbike and it's evil and it's terrifying and it possesses you the more you ride it and this like the the guy that owns it is going insane and can't understand what's going on and when he rides past and you hear the roar of the engines it just follows with a <laughs> Just that lack of attention to detail, just like, oh, it'd be all right. Just nobody will notice, like, the clown honker on it. I love it. Another uh, one that's that's about the, that I love for the style, the overall composition, is Witches in Fact and Fantasy by Lauren Payne. And for me, it's a beaut it's like the best of both worlds. An awesome kind of photo cover type thing and a beautiful illustration. I love the typeface and how it's designed and the gradients and the stained glass window shape. Everything works together to to draw me in. But it's not just an illustration or a photo. It's it's like everything working together. That's been a favourite for years. And I think I think I've got that. I mean, I've got the like Robert Hale hardcover version, but it's the Nail paperback. I just love it. I had to include this one because this is an all-time favourite nail cover of mine and I wanted it for so long. And when I found an affordable one, I was so thrilled just because I think it's the most bonkers photo cover that exists in all of the nail paperbacks and it's the orgy of babastis by Derek hyde chambers i don't that's that cat thing it's sometimes some kind of taxidermy creation i i don't understand i don't think i'm meant to understand I don't know if you'll get this reference. There's a series called Beasts that I adore by Nigel Neal. And there's a, my favourite episode is one called Baby with Simon McCorkindale acting his socks off. You get like twice as much acting as what you've paid for with Simon McCorkindale. But one of the old dudes that when he sees the like hideous shriveled baby, if you've seen the episode, he just kind of goes, something like that, that'll have had purpose. And it's, I think, this, something like that, that'll have had purpose. That was made for a reason. Possibly not just to be on a book cover. We need a, we need a photo for the cover of the Orgy of Babastis. Right, let's get a taxidermist to make some hideous, messed up cat type creature out of fur and that. I would genuinely love to know the story behind that book cover. And I don't. I can't furnish you lovely folks with it. I wish I could. Maybe somebody knows. Maybe somebody can 
one of you lovely viewers can leave a comment and tell me. Um, a couple of uh, there's a couple of older anthologies in this, and one of them is Tales of the Macabre by Kurt Singer. It's a really good anthology actually, but I just adore the the cover. The cover artist isn't credited. Um, but just everything about it, again, it's a lighter tone. It's not, like, dark. The darkest it gets are the purples and stuff. But just just that dude coming out and, like, those two skeletal onlookers, it it really works for me. I kind of want to know more. It, it As an illustration, overall, it just draws me into that moment. And I just need to know what's going on. And I'm pretty sure that that whatever's going on in that illustration isn't included in one of the stories. So for some stuff, New English Library did wraparound covers, uh, mainly for a lot of their sci-fi ones, but one that I think is absolutely beautiful, a gorgeous illustration, is uh, Dr Caligari's Black Book. It's a Peter Haining anthology. Um, I'll try and find uh, the the whole wrap around, um, but it is so beautiful and understated. Uh, I think it probably appeals to me because I really loved the uh, the is it nineteen twenty two cabinet of Dr Caligari. I think it was nineteen twenty two, and it it kind of feels it feels like that to me. Um, it's an alright anthology, it's not bad, but just the, the illustration, oh, it's just gorgeous. Another gorgeous illustration, so don't get cross with me, this isn't straight up horror, but it's uh, a subject that some people may find horrific um, or unsettling, and it's uh, Camel's biography of Alistair Crowley. Um, I just adore this illustration. Um, it's strange and unusual. It's not the most detailed. It's kind of quite quite bold strokes with the painting, but I, I love the that kind of light blue as it goes up into Crowley and the whatever's going on further up. Can, does that work? Oh. It's just gorgeous, and it's not necessarily the best book about Crowley, but it just looks so beautiful. I'm so chuffed to have that on my shelf. Next up is a photo cover, and it's very basic. It's very basic, but it works. It draws me in like a good book cover should. It's The Village of Fear by Martin Jensen, and it's a photo of a church and graveyard. That's it. But sometimes, if it's the right photo of a church and graveyard, it so draws you in and makes you want to know more and makes you want to know what's going off and sets that beautiful, ethereal, haunted, sinister atmosphere. And for my money, that photo does it. I just adore that. It just... It largely epitomises one of the things I love about New English Library horror. Definitely. Next up is, uh, we've kind of got two going on here. So, the one I've picked is The Terror of the Seven Crypts, another Etienne Aubin one, who uh, obviously was, was still Jim Moffat. It was used previously on uh, the first volume of Kurt Singer's Ghost Omnibus, but I quite like the fact that it's like zoomed in on this one. I think it looks much nicer. It's a bolder image. I love how it it fills the cover and the, the title is kind of, you know, it's offset. And I think it's a stronger design than the Kurt Singer one. Beautiful illustration. Another absolute favourite of mine. And the book is alright, but it's not like an absolute belter. Is Draco the Dragon Man by Cyril Donson. 
What I love about this is how muted it is, how they've dropped the kind of saturation and the contrast down. I love kind of a autumnal woodland. It just makes me so happy and just want to go home and watch creepy horror stuff and read creepy horror novels. And it's not really a creepy horror novel. It's a horror novel, but it's not really creepy. But I just love how muted it all is and you've got to kind of have a proper look at it to see everything properly. Um, it almost reminds me of a like early 80s video nasty type poster. Um, maybe, again, that's, that's why it appeals to me so much. Next up is another really wonderful design that I think is it's just beautiful and they made some odd decisions but I think it works and that's the New English Library uh, edition of the novelization of Night of the Living Dead. This illustration of these zombies is gorgeous and when you can kind of look at it up close you can see just how beautiful it is but they've not dwelled on that that's just like something to be glanced at the title is really bold and then they knew that was what was going to sell the book putting night of the living dead on the front of the book people are going to buy it but just the fact that the title's so bold and the beautiful illustration is so kind of understated and just creeping up from the bottom kind of thing i i think that really works i think it's a gorgeous cover it's so stylish and uh, this is, I think this is one of the first Nels I got when I was like, I love this publisher. I need to collect these. Another beautiful illustration that mine, unfortunately, has got a crease through it is In Memory of Sarah Bailey by Louise Cooper. Um, I This is a more, more of a recent pickup for me. Um, I think I probably got it about eight or nine months ago. But looking at it on Google... I always thought this was a photo and I was always like I love that photo cover with that last with the vampire teeth and and it's not it's it's a, an absolutely gorgeous and subtle illustration I think it's quite a bold move filling the cover of the book with just like this lass's face half in shadow it really works I mean it obviously tells you that it's a vampire novel but New English Library covers were bold in their own way. Sometimes they were bold because they were understated. And I, yeah, I love it. it it's, it's subtle and clever. Another one that's a little less subtle is uh, Village of Blood by Ian Deer, which uh, it's, a, it's a skeleton in a graveyard and some bats. It's uh, it's a really good book anyway. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, and there's not much to it. And it's not very clever. But it's that... It sums up that era of horror for me. And I absolutely love it. One that is in some kind of order... Which I think is my favourite New English Library cover. I can just sit and look at it. It makes me so happy. Is the original version of the Monster Club that they brought out. So they brought a movie tie-in one out, which I don't think is quite as lovely as this one. I, the, I, I adore the Monster Club. I love the book. I do like Chetwind Hayes. I thought he was such a wonderful writer. And so I, I, I like the author anyway. I love, I genuinely love the movie. It's just the most bonkers, cheesy nonsense. It it it's almost the scenes filmed in the Monster Club are almost cringeworthy. There's something about it that's like, oh, that's oh. But some of the uh, some of the portmanteau short film bits are just awesome. The last one in the Village of Ghouls has just been a favourite of mine for years, and 
the 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 kind of novelization movie tie-in one doesn't quite capture the joy of the movie i think as much as this dude just uh reaching through your broken window we're just wanting to say hello so that's that's 20 new english library book covers that i adore um I'm sorry it's not like an author retrospective or anything this week. It will be next week because I'll have got all my reading finished for it. So thank you for joining me, guys. And uh, thank you for watching to the end. And I will see you lovely folks in the next video.